I concealed my sexual orientation at school and when a fellow student found out about my sexual orientation, me and my girlfriend were physically harassed and threatened. She just kind of laughed it off and I ended up having to play pretend as far as gender went for the next 18 years. My family was never really supportive of it. Um, to the point where there was a huge uh, debate and argument and uh, they're like, well, here's, here's the door. When I was about three or four, I actually told my mom that uh, I was trans, well, more accurately, I said, I'm not a girl. I came out to my mom as bisexual when I was 13 years old. From simple things about, like, what name I wanted to be called, to pronoun, to just stupidity on people are like, is that a boy or a girl? Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning youth struggle with more than the usual teen stressors. In addition to issues with school, family, and friends, LGBTQ youth also face homophobia, transphobia, and risk being harassed if they come out. Fourth grade, I started um, self-mutilating and um, these feelings of helplessness and feeling out of control just increased. Cutting, using um, drugs and anything to basically get the feeling of everything around me to numb so I didn't have to feel it. Some days I was so depressed I just, I almost literally could not move. I just laid in bed and I stared at the walls and I was just paralyzed. Depression is like a cloudy day where you're sitting alone in the corner and it's just like you're crying all the time and you're just feeling really hopeless and you, just, you get this really heavy feeling in your heart and it's just like you just feel like a nobody. Pretty much feels like somebody just like crawls into your insides and just eats it and then you have nothing except for your skin and bones. Depression is not the same as feeling down. It is a prolonged sense of hopelessness and disinterest in things that once brought happiness. 30 to 40 percent of lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth will attempt suicide at least once versus 10 percent of their straight peers. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning youth experience a significantly higher risk for suicide because they face a lot more risk factors in their lives that may lead to depression, self-harm, and suicidal thoughts. Some of these risk factors include homophobia and transphobia, gender nonconformity, a negative coming out experience, internal conflict, homelessness, and no access to LGBTQ friendly services. I had several acquaintances online that I'd uh, talked to about my feelings and thoughts and they uh, helped me through it a lot. Also reading, writing, listening to music. You need to find something that means something to you, you know? Like a any sort of hobby, like surfing, cooking, playing music. You know, find something you feel happy doing. I like exercising, it makes me feel really good. I also liked visiting the reservation. Um, my mom's Native American, so we go back to the reservation and visit family. and. Just connecting with my roots back there was really helpful. I talked to my one of my favorite teachers at school, uh, my English teacher. She was she was very nice, and she actually looked at me like I was a human being. I went to the school counselor's office. Uh, it was a really safe place for me at school when I felt uncomfortable in that environment. Um, we talked a lot and then her and my mom uh, both intervened and recommended that I check myself into an inpatient hospital program. Whatever 
my brother didn't know I knew and whatever I didn't know he knew and he knew a lot about the LGBTQ places and people and whatnot and introduced me a lot to a lot. If you notice a friend seems hopeless, extremely depressed, or talking about not being around anymore, they may be in crisis. The warning signs you should be aware of include a previous suicide attempt, talking about suicide, a strong wish to die, giving away things that are important, and signs of depression such as moodiness, anxiety, hopelessness, and withdrawal. Reaching out to a friend can help a lot, but it's important to connect your friend with an adult they can trust. Trusted adults include teachers, family members, family friends, drop-in center staff, a coach, or clergy. My mom and dad are fighting a lot, mostly about me. I'm failing most of my classes. They complain all I do is sleep. The kids at school keep calling me a fairy in the halls. There are rumors going around the football team that I'm gay. It makes me so angry, I just want to break something. I mean, am I gay? I haven't told anyone. I hate this. I just want it to end. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Oh, hey, uh, nothing. You sure? Yeah. What's going on, man? You haven't been yourself lately. I told you it's nothing. Just been overwhelmed. Seriously, dude, what's up? I mean, you, you missed practice again today. I'm worried. Why? It's not like anybody would miss me. What do you mean by that? You think about killing yourself? I don't know, dude. Just, it's been a really, really long year. Why don't we go talk to Mrs. Cohn? Yeah, okay. She can probably help me. Come on, I'll help you find her. Go Hello. Sit down. Oh, thank you. What's going on? Um, just. I need someone to talk to you. Keep checking in with your friend, even if they seem distant. It's important to show your support. Here are three steps you can take to support a friend. Show you care. Let your friend know that you care about how they are feeling, but don't try to solve their problems. It is important to listen to what they have to say. Ask the question. Don't hesitate to raise the subject of suicide. Talking about suicide won't put the idea in their heads. Chances are, if you have observed any of the warning signs, they're already thinking about it. Be direct in a caring, non-confrontational way to get the conversation started. Get help. Keep moving forward together and get them connected to the help they need. Connect your friend to a trusted adult. Friends and family, how they can really help um, someone who is in my situation, it's just calling maybe every other day a 10 minute phone call just a quick one so that you can let whoever's struggling know that they have someone that still cares about them it is important to listen without judgment and not over or underreact. there is going to be good again and if you just just realize that this is a time and it's a passing and it's a hard time but know that there is a future and it will be better. I'd say just keep moving, one step in front of the other. Just work on getting what you need to get self-sufficient and start saving, start saving money. To keep going forward, because even though the situation may suck, it does get better, and then it gets worse again, but then it gets better again. Um, but just to keep keep going and eventually you'll find really, really good people. I'm basically getting my life back together. I recently quit smoking and yeah, it's, I'm just making progress. Right now I'm fully recovered. Um, I'm going to a local university and studying clinical psychology. Well, currently in life, I um, uh, have a job. I was going to school and uh, have two dogs. They're crazy. I love them. And my goal is to sail around the world with my dogs. You are not alone.
you are not alone. You're not alone.